What's going on guys? Today I wanted to bring you another one of my 2014 NAWCQ hat format deck profiles. Today I wanted to bring you a rogue option that you can play either for fun, but also it's a very powerful deck that can compete with some of the top decks and do some really cool things at that as well. And that deck is going to be Dark Worlds. I know a lot of people enjoy Dark Worlds. It has a very big fan base. So I'm extremely excited to get into this deck profile. Real quick though, I do want to say Dark Worlds do have sort of confusing effects. Uh, they have an effect based on when you discard them, and as well as an effect on if it's discarded from an opponent's card effect. For the sake of not confusing you guys, I'm just going to go over the effects that happen when you discard them from your own card effects, uh, which is very uh, relevant, versus the other effects don't come up that often. So just keep that in mind that there will be other text on these cards, but the main thing I want to focus is, is their main effects that you'll more than likely be triggering 90% of the time. But anyways, let's get into this deck profile. Starting off, we play three copies of Graffa. This is your boss monster of the deck. It's a level 8, 2700 attack, and its effect is when it's discarded. Um, obviously, again, I'm referring to it's your own cards. You can pop a card your opponent controls, and then it also has the, uh, not effect, but inherent summoning condition where you can return a Dark World monster on your field to the hand and special summon it from Graveyard. That does not activate, which is extremely important as well, as well as that effect, or that part of the card not being once per turn. After that, three copies of Snow. Snow is your main searcher. When it's discarded, you're able to add a Dark World card, very important card, from your deck to your hand, and that is not once per turn either. So this can add you any of your monsters, spell traps, super versatile, super important for the deck. After that, we play three copies of Brow. Uh, important for Brow specifically is it's a dark level 3 fiend, which will come up a little later on, and it has the effect that when it's discarded, you can draw one card, again, not once per turn. After that, two copies of Beige. Beige is probably one of the weakest ones that you have to play, just being a level 4 extender and body. You could in theory cut this down to 1. I've been really enjoying 2 specifically, but as always, test it out for yourself and see what you like. The last Dark World I'm playing is one copy of Silva. This card can also technically be cut. The reason I play it is when it's discarded, you can special summon it, and it is a little more beefy. It is uh, 2,300 and can get bigger with some of the cards later on. Uh, it also works with some one of copy of a trap card that I'll be playing that I'll get into later on. But besides that, the stats being, you know, a level 5 doesn't really line up with anything else in the deck, and so it feels a little awkward, but... To me, it was just nice to have one additional Dark World monster that is slightly larger and could summon itself. But again, that in theory is another card you can cut. That's it for the Dark World monsters. After that, we play three copies of Tour Guide. This, again, is why I was referring to the stats on Brow, because this can summon Brow from deck. And then what you're able to do is if you have a Graffa in Grave, you're able to return the Brow to hand and special the Graffa. And now if you have discard cards, you're able to discard the Brow, get extra draws, as well as just using this to summon other copies of Tour Guide and make rank threes, which is pretty cool too. After that, two copies of Trance Archfiend. This allows you to up to once per turn, discard a fiend type monster and make this card gain 500 attack. It doesn't seem very important of an effect, but it will trigger all of your Dark World's effects by discarding. So that is really important, especially since Dark World's don't uh, only get their effects on certain discards, not all. 
Um, so that is very important to note as well. This also has a cool effect that when it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can target one of your banished dark monsters and add that target to your hand, which is very relevant for the Dark World field spell that we'll get into in a second. The last two monsters I play are two copies of Malefic Stardust Dragon. This card's really cool. It requires you to have a field spell up or it's destroyed, but it also has a cool effect that your field spells can't be destroyed while it's on the field. Uh, really, really strong. Also a level eight, which will be relevant later on, um, you know, for Xyz plays and other cards of such. After that, we play, here's the spells, three copies of Gates of Dark World. This card is insane. Uh, it makes all your fiend monsters gain 300 attack and defense, so all your dark worlds get really, really big. So grapple will be like, for example, a 3,000 beater, which is really good. And then it also has the effect that you can banish a fiend type monster. It doesn't have to be a dark world, just a fiend type. Uh, remove it from play and then discard a fiend monster and draw a card so basically you're able to draw a card and trigger your dark world effects which is really really good and it's only once per turn per copy so if you play another you can do it again three copies of dark world dealings just to turbo through your deck a little bit faster three copies of dragged down into the grave being able to get hand knowledge on your opponent is always really really strong whether that's old formats modern formats hand knowledge is super important and it also forces them to discard a card from your hand and you get to discard one from theirs so that's really cool because you know it gets certain dark world effects especially if you leave them with only one or two choices that both would benefit you like a lot really really strong card after that two copies of trade-in um i some people could say to play three i think two is the best just because there's only really five level eights to discard to get this effect off uh i get that you could technically add grapha from snow's effect but i found that two is the best where it's not dead all the time basically after that Two copies of Soul Charge. Two is the perfect number in this deck, honestly, for Soul Charge. You want to have one turn one because you turbo through your cards so fast since you're drawing so much that it can put up some really crazy turn one boards, as well as having one later game when you really need it. And the last spell is one copy of Allure, obviously more draw power because, you know, as if this deck didn't have enough already. Next, moving on to the Traps three copies of reckless greed uh really really strong if you have multiple back row obviously your opponent is gonna try to be more tricky with what they pop or trying to out it and similar to i guess edison format where they play like legacy of yadagrasu and things like that it kind of makes your opponent waste a card if they think your back row is real and once you see some of the other traps it might make sense why that could be um, as well as skipping your draw phases isn't that crazy when a lot of your monsters give you draws or searches or, for example, your field spell. So this kind of just feels free most of the time. After that, two copies of Skill Drain with the field spell and Grapha being able to summon itself back from Grave, your guys just get really, really big. So under Skill Drain, you can kind of just play beat down with your opponent and only two copies is fine because again you turbo through your deck so quickly that you're gonna see it more than likely two copies of mind crush this card again two is completely fine seeing your opponent's hand with things like drag down uh, is really really strong or even using this defensively to for example call a card wrong discard your own dark world which would then summon back or get a different effect this is really good and the last card is the reason i said that i chose to play the silva in the deck and that is eradicator epidemic virus uh, this card is just always been such a crazy card so having more cards that can technically trigger this uh, is really important but there is 
reason to cut the Silva, especially since my build is 41 cards, which isn't super relevant, simply because, again, there is so much draw power. But that is it for the trap cards. Really, really cool, fun deck. Moving on to the extra deck. One Stardust, because you have to play it for the Malefic Stardust. One Zombie Stein, uh, because it's huge, it's 4,500, so under skill drain, your opponent probably isn't outing this card. Uh, it also has a negation effect and a discard effect, which is cool. Uh, one Felgrand, no explanation needed there. Heretic Sun Dragon, all say to non targeting out your opponent's cards. That's it for the eights. For the fours, one crazy box. It's a 3,000 rank 4 that's a fiend so it will gain attack from the field spell as well and it's just really hard to out being that big one key beetle this can be good for your turn one plays being able to protect your field spells or other things depending on what you have honor arc heartland draco which will get the second or the main first effect of your opponent can't target it for attacks while you have a face up spell because you do have face up spells and Exiton. After that, the rank threes, one Acid Golem, again under skill drain, it's just a big body, one Levier to bring back your Dark Worlds that were banished from the field spell, one Mikquip Engineer, Zen Mains, and Fortune Tune to gain back life and stall longer if you're trying to get into more combo pieces. But anyways, that is the deck profile. If you guys enjoyed this deck, have any questions about siding cards or siding patterns or want to see gameplay with this deck, definitely let me know in the comments section as well as dropping a like on this video and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. I really do appreciate it and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So anyways, I will see you in the next video.